Welcome back to more Tip to Tally. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to preview the Baltimore Ravens versus the Cincinnati Bengals, which is taking place tonight. Thursday night football. Let's get into it. The, the last game we played them in week five, if I'm not mistaken, was a crazy, crazy game. We went through a roller coaster of emotions. We fought our way back into the game. Had the ball in overtime, you know, driving to win the game. Fumbled it uncharacteristically. They get it back. They screw it up. We get it back again. Kick the field goal in overtime to win the game. So sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, but we overcame a lot in that game. And, you know, you a W is a W, however you get it. And like I said, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And in that case, I think we was a little bit of both, but especially lucky there in that overtime because it could have easily went the other way because they got the ball in their territory after the fumble. Let's talk about our uh, matchups. Um, Starting with their offense, Bengals offense is ranked 17. Uh, total yards, passing yards, they were ranked seventh, and in rushing yards, they were ranked 27th. So, um, total yards are 330.6, passing yards 236.6, and then rushing yards 94.2. As compared to the Ravens, we're first in total yards, 445.9, third in passing yards 254. And then first in rushing with 191.9. We're, we're under 200 for the first time in a long time. Hopefully we can get that back up, though. Defensively, the Bengals are 19th total in total yards. Uh, the Ravens are 21st in total yards. Uh, Bengals are 17 versus the pass at 212 yards. And 18 versus the run with 130 yards. We obviously are last versus the pass, 280 yards a game. and But we still first against the run, 75.4 yards per game. Uh, that went up six yards because um, Denver was able to run it on us a little bit last week, but we got the, we started off the game right. Uh, Marcus's play down here and then interception to, to start the game, that just set the momentum up for the rest of the game last week. But individual stars for the Cincinnati Bengals. We all know them. Joe Shiesty, Macaulay Calkin, Joe Burrow, whatever you want to call him. He's a dude, he's a dude. I'm going to list off some stats for Joe so far this year. Fifth in passing yards, 2,328. Tied for second in TD passes with 20. With guess who? Lamar. Third in passer rating, 108.1. Guess who first in passer rating? Lamar. <laughs> and he's fourth in pass EPA with a positive 41.2. And we all know what Joe Burrow does. If you give him free releases, he going to fit the ball in. Uh, you come up and try to stop that stuff, he's going to try to get over top to Jamar. But um, rushing-wise, then they got rid of Joe, Joe Mixon. He's now in Houston doing his thing down there. Chase Brown has emerged as their lead back. Uh, so far in the year, he has 479 yards and four TDs, uh, coming off one of his best games of the season last week. Now, the guy of all guys, their best player, Jamar Chase. Um, those some numbers out there for Jamar Chase. Second in reception, yards, 717. Third in receptions with 55. Know what Jamar has done to the Ravens in the past, going back to that 200-yard game a couple years ago. And even this last game, you know, the deep over routes, Finding the ways to get get deep on us, no matter how it happens, and he can take the short stuff and, and score from there too. He's one of them ones. That's all I'm gonna say. The thing is, I don't think T's playing. I think T's hurt, so we really have to deal with uh, Joe throwing to Jamar and his little, you know, spreading around to the other guys. But the main threat throwing the ball is Jamar, and if you can kind of get a hold on him, you should be okay. Should be okay. Defensively for him, Logan Wilson is third in tackles with 88. Jermaine Pratt is eighth in tackles in the league with 81. Uh, the bad thing about their secondary, and guy that I, you know, I had a lot of respect for the first time we played him, but he hadn't played well. He wasn't playing well then. He had got benched the week before, and he hadn't played well since. Cam Taylor Brick. 
He's been targeted 30, 49 times, giving up 33 catches, which is third in the NFL. 13 in the NFL. 13 in the NFL. He's already given up 473 yards, third most in the NFL. So Cam Taylor Britt is a guy that I thought was going to be their number one. Turning out not to be that guy. And keep in mind, um, Younger Hill got hurt the last time we played, so I think he's out for the season. Let's take a look at the PFL matchups. When you look at their offensive line versus our defensive line, we should win that match according to, you know, on paper. With Owe, Van Oy, Matabike, and Travis, we should really, you know, I ain't going to say dominate them guys because Mims is pretty good. And they, their guys are okay. But when you look at their five versus our four, we should we should dominate that matchup. And But not dominate. I, I said it again. We should win that matchup and and put constant pressure on Joe. Should. Secondary-wise. Now, they're without. They're without T. So if if T was there, I wouldn't say this, but with T not being there, I think our secondary has the advantage. Obviously, they got the best player with Chase. I mean, yeah, Jamar Chase. But I think the sum of our secondary versus the sum of their receiving core, I think I think we got the advantage right there. And then when you flip it over on the other side, their edge guys are pretty darn good. Hendrickson, but Hubbard may be out. I think Hubbard's out. But Henderson had four sacks last week. Four. And he is always a problem when we play them, so we can't underestimate him. Um, Chip, some very few one-on-ones with either tackle. But definitely keep an eye on where he's at pre-snap and do what you need to do to make sure the protection goes toward him. Uh, now, our receivers versus their secondary, I think we have a clear advantage. Nelly, Zay, Bateman. You add Johnson in there versus, you know, their guys, Cam Taylor Britt, who I just talked about. Uh, Mike Hilton. Now, Mike Hilton's pretty good. He's at slot corner. He's pretty good. And then DJ Turner. I think we got advantage on him. Uh, Geno Stone's back there. Y'all know how I feel about Geno. It, it ain't changed. It ain't changed at all. He was back up for a reason to a guy that we benched a couple weeks ago. It ain't changed. So... I think we got the advantage overall. So I think we have the advantage in a bunch of areas. Um, the only caveat is if Joe and Chase get hot, they can carry that team. And Chase and the Brown kids run the ball fairly well as well. You mix that in too. But if, if Joe and Jay Moore get hot, y'all know what we last versus the pass. So you know that. I ain't, I ain't even got to keep reiterating that. But how can we win the game offensively? Establish the run. Unless they flood the box like Denver did. Uh, Denver was come, running out there with 5D linemen at, at one point. And so you kind of had to pass because that's what they were giving you. Again, that take what the defense give you uh, motto. So if they don't flood the box like that and keep 5D five, five linemen and two backers. So if they ain't give you a 7-8 man front, run the ball. Establish the run. that open up your play action. Some of the deep passes to Zay were play action passes. And... Like, we were keeping Ricard in. We were keeping a tight end in. We were keeping a receiver in the block sometime, running three-man routes, and them guys were still getting open because of the play action, the space the play action created behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. So establish the run. Your play action will be there. Then you can do some of your other stuff, too, once you get that going. Uh, no three and outs and control the football. Win time possession. Keep Joe on the sideline. You should win the game. You should win the game, especially unless your defense giving up quick scores. Defensively, how can we win it? No free releases. I understand that we're going to try to disguise stuff and do this different stuff. But I put a, well, when me and Chris did our video yesterday on Chalk Talk, we showed Tavius Robinson getting hands on guys coming off the line of scrimmage. If the defensive end can do that, and he got hands on them, then he dropped to his own. If the defensive lineman can do that, the other guys can do that. Now, I know they be having to go way or whatever, but you give them a free release, it's going to be pitch and catch with Joe Burrow. So no free releases. And I ain't saying press. I'm just saying don't leave guys uncovered. Don't leave guys uncovered. Uh, keep them at 50% or lower on third down. Are they going to convert some third downs? Yes. But if we can keep them at 50% or lower, we should be good. And there's more opportunities for our offense to go out there and score. Chase just can't go ham. He, he can't go ham. He can't, can't have another 200-yard game. He can't do that. 
But it, he's going to make plays. And the key is in secondary. When he makes plays, don't let that one good play for him turn into four, five, or six. If it's one good play, forget it. Refocus. Shut him down the next time. And as far as score predictions, I got Ravens 35, Bengals 27. Another victory for us. And um, we keep the pressure on Pittsburgh to try to stay at the top of the division. So uh, that's my preview for you guys i appreciate you guys for tuning in you could have been anywhere in the world but you chose to be with me i uh, enjoy your work day thursday and let's get ready for some thursday night football make sure you come in tune in for the watch party i'll be here make sure you be here peace <laughs>